you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm gonna start this video out a little bit different here. Um, uh, over the weekend, my grandpa Glenn, um, his his uh, time and his earthly body uh, has ended, and uh, his spirit got a chance to go home. I've got to find comfort in the fact that uh, I believe that he was at peace and he was ready. I guess I could, you could say I got kind of lucky that the place that where uh, he was living let dad and my me and my mom and Molly go up and I guess you say could say good uh, say goodbye. With this whole COVID nineteen thing, we aren't going to be able to get together as a family to celebrate his life. So I kind of figured that since I have this platform here what's a better way to you know do that because his favorite place to be was down here on the farm tinkering and hanging out with us so growing up i gotta spend a good amount of time with him he he definitely taught me a lot of things i get my inventiveness from him uh, my ability to solve problems the, i feel like the way that my mind works uh is kind of the way that his mind works he's always problem solving inventing in his mind so i feel like that that's where i get it without a doubt definitely taught me how to like stop and think because when i was a kid oh, i probably still am is that like he he would always let me screw up first i guess you could say as in if i was going to be trying to do something he might try and tell me how to do it and then i'd think yeah i know what i'm doing you know or whatever as a little kid and He'd let me go do it, and then after I get frustrated, can't do it, screw it up or something like that, he'd take the time and say, here's what you need to do, you know, and it, it definitely taught me how to stop and think, you know. But events like this uh, make you stop and kind of think how lucky some of us are to spend as much time with family members or in my situation like my father it's like the farming kind of gives you the blessing to work every day with your dad if if that's your situation and uh, if anybody tells you that working with your father's necessarily the easiest thing in the world uh, you can tell them they're a bold-faced liar right off the get-go you know it's like but it's probably one of life's better blessings so but anyways, we're going to continue on doing what I know he'd want us to do, and that's to continue on getting the job done here. So today's for you, Grandpa. We'll miss you. We love you. And enjoy your good long rest. You deserve it. All right, guys. Thanks for clicking your way back to the good old Southern IA. We were rained out yesterday, but today is now Sunday, and we think we can get back into the field the end of the last vlog you guys saw it start to rain or it was raining we ended up getting well according to different people in between three tenths and five tenths but before we can get into work dad's actually showing up he's just pulling in my alarm's telling me that he's pulling in well, yep that's him we've got to change the oil on the 9400 it has break-in oil in it which we'll tell you about here in a second boom oh my gosh yeah, scared me wayne <laughs> but anyways hopefully you guys are enjoying this planting vlog here don't forget that we are going to be giving away a hat when the first planting vlog v re first video of a planting vlog series reaches 2,000 likes or when we reach 25,000 subscribers but like I said today is Sunday so that means it's just dad and I getting business done today the plan sounds like I'm gonna be planting and he's gonna be taking care of some tillage Wayne broke his mower again already. Same bolt. So the reason we have to change the oil in this. So the reason we have to change the oil in this tractor is it because it had engine work done on it last year, and it has break-in engine oil in it, and the hours are up on that. So you got to change the oil. Normally we wouldn't be trying to change the oil when it should be working, but this is a special situation. Three drain plugs on it, four drain plugs on it. Son of a gun. Whoa. <laughs> Too far. 
far? Oh, good thing I got that on camera, huh? I was trying to loosen it a little bit. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> Just snug your plug. Son of a gun, there's no need to have that plug on there that tight. Ash twenty fifth. So we've got the oil changed in the tractor there. Dad's gonna be taking off with it. But this field here is the field that I'm gonna jump into first thing here today. It's conditions, like again, are so-so. But there's a good chunk of ground here that I can get done. We can try and stay ahead of the curve. We're, I don't know if I feel, it feels like we're behind, but are we behind? Probably. Here she comes, just a tractoring down the street, singing raw, 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 raw. You, you excited to go plant beans? You excited? To, we're not ready to go yet. We gotta get dad. We gotta get. We gotta. Wait, hey, we aren't ready to plant beans yet. Oh yeah, back stretches. Oh. here this morning got to get all the computers turned on get the chair aired up get the air conditioning blowing everything on my computers quick okay we'll go field area we'll clear that And roll good to go there good to go there giggy 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 let's go planting plant her down thing that I'm going to plant here is what we call the end rows. Some people call them the headlands. It's basically a border or if it's, imagine if it's a picture, it's the picture frame of the picture. So it's all of the exterior end rows of crop. What that does is it borders out the farm and then also gives you an area that you turn around on. This can be a compacted area for your crops. Um, in our situation, it's usually the worst crop is the first pass or two around the entire outside of the field. Anyways, farmers, let me know. Are your guys' outside end rows better than the rest of your field or worse? Down here in Southern Iowa, far worse from the tree damage and deer damage. See something you don't like. Not closing very good. Yesterday when we were rained out, we found a closing wheel assembly that holds the two closing wheels together or on the row unit itself. It was pretty worn out, so we replaced it and apparently it didn't get any down pressure put onto it that caught that. Looks like we're ready to run again. Here for a little bit. Uh, I like to look at my last cut, see if I see any 
off. Uh, I do have one strip here that's obviously darker than the rest of them. They're actually two kind of next to each other. Looks like it might just be in between the tire track is what's causing that. It seems a little bit off, so I'm going to take a look at the back of the planter and see if there's anything going on back there. It looks visually okay to me, so I'm just thinking maybe it was a little bit of a wet spot there. And, uh, the tires are covering up the one side, so we can keep going and eat some lunch. We continue forward with Molly's bread, have peanut butter and jelly. The KPM2 monitor, which is monitoring the planter, just went off, said that box number seven on the front is not planting. My guess is by the acres that we have on the monitor that we are just about out of beans. I was actually getting really close to doing a fill up here. And of course, like every farmer knows, is that it always happens when you're all the way in the back of the field, as far away from it as the bean tender as you can be. What I'm actually gonna do here is open up the boxes. It, yeah, those are really solid. And what I'm gonna try and do is actually balance them out a little bit. That'll allow me to get back to the front and uh, we can do a refill which I'm gonna go into depth on for you guys today because we've been getting a lot of questions about it. So I'll plant this back up to the front and then we'll catch up with you guys when we're getting ready to fill. So we're gonna do the deep dive into a reload here and talk about some stuff. I'm gonna go very general public uh, kind of style on this. So sorry to my farmer subscribers and viewers. I've gotten a lot of questions about this so I feel like it's something that should be covered. So what we're gonna do here is do a complete refill of this planter. Uh, these, these planter boxes are two bushels a piece, I believe. Well, quit, quote me on that. But I'll just take you guys step by step on how I'm doing this. Okay, so we pull what we call the bean buggy up behind the planter here which this here is the bean buggy so the bean buggy you can hold four what are called pro boxes and in those pro boxes are the seed so instead of using a bunch of bags you can then get your seed in a bulk plastic tub like this which is a, of a certain desi design that can go on to tenders such as these where they have trap gates which it says slide gate here which are these right here, you pull that open, it drops the seed down. The seed goes into these hoppers down here. So then you unfold this auger right here and then you can auger them into each individual box. And you access those two storage compartments by this lever here and this lever here, which controls the gate, which controls the amount of flow you get coming into the auger. So after that set up, I have to now open up all the boxes on the planter and uh, get ready to receive the seed. Now people filling these planters will do them multiple ways. A lot of people they'll unfold their augers, well then we're tripping over those. We've just found the easiest way to do this is to move the truck forward as after you get done halfway through this. And then we just take these lids off and instead of like putting them forward like this we just set them on the frame behind the plant uh, behind the boxes simple easy and while i'm finishing this here i one of the questions that i've received a couple of times is how many acres can we do on a fill up here that depends upon the size of a be of the bean the size of the bean can vary uh by the given year depending on the growing year of the previous year uh genetics yada 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 and so why the size of the bean matters is, is that we actually plant in number of beans per acre. That's called the population. So the smaller the bean is, the more beans I can put into the box. The more beans in the box means the more acres that I can plant. But typically at a given population, we plant somewhere in between 30 and 35 acres on a fill up. So the next question I'll have to answer is how many beans are in a box? So in a typical or our boxes from Champion, they come in 45 units in a box. They no longer sell soybeans by the weight anymore because of the size of the beans changes the weight as well. They sell it by the number of beans in a bag. And all of that information is up here on these boxes tags. 
Now this is where it can change. So people still kind of buy soybeans on a price per bag or a price per unit. Different companies have different number of seeds per bag from what I've been told. But essentially I kind of hope that answers a couple of the questions. On a typical box, there's 45 units, which is 45 units of 140,000 seeds at a certain weight. And you can tell that by the seeds per pound. That's how the soybean world works now. So now that the planter is ready to receive the beans, we just have to kick on the Honda motor here by, tur by turning on the choke and turning on the gas. Fire it up. We're ready to put some soybeans in the planter. So to supply my beans, we take the beans off the back of the buggy first for transportation safety. I flip the lever here. I pull the gate open. That drops the beans from the pro box into the hopper, which is right down there. And now we can start putting them in. This tender right here is controlled by a little remote so I can hold on to the remote and the tube and tender myself. So the next question that we get is, what's that stuff you're putting on your soybeans after they're filled up? This is a dry lubricant. What's actually in here isn't actually in here. We buy dry lubricant in bulk and then we refill these for ease of handling. It's a mixture of graphite, which is, graphite is when you write with a pencil, not lead, like old school, but like graphite and number two yellow pencils, that's what's in here. And then also talcum powder or baby powder, essentially. It's a mixture of those two. And what it does is it lets the seed flow and it kind of dry lubricates things. So we just put a little bit in with every single box. And this is the stuff that 99.999% of the time makes me look covered in filth. Okay, so now that the boxes are filled, the seeds are lubed, bandits pissed on tires, we can put the lids back on and go back to planting. Next question from the comment section below but have I mentioned that we're gonna be giving away a couple stickers from being my favorite comments and once Molly's favorite comment from a couple of videos ago that you could win a sticker by being a favorite comment from this video as long as you comment on it within the first 24 hours of it being posted so you better click that subscribe button ring the little bell next to it so you know when I upload a video and of course Likes equal back scratches for the blue healer that won't go up the stairs by using the angle. Use the angle. So the next question is though, why are you not planting treated seed? Before I forget. Change my product. Okay, so now when most people buy their soybeans that don't have their ability to treat it, or even people that treat their own soybeans uh, and have 10 treaters, a lot of the times people that sell you the treaters try and get you on a contract or something along those lines to buy all the chemicals to treat the seed through them, and then it comes in like a keg and it has coloring on it, and all that coloring is is a dye. The colorant that you see on seed most of the time has nothing to do with actually the treatment at all. Most of the treatments that we put on the seed are usually uh, like a clear, not a clear, like a, a milky pale style color to it. So they're really pretty much colorless. So what that leads me back to is, is that your soybeans that you harvest in the fall don't look a whole lot different than the soybeans that are pre-treated. And a lot of the times they don't look a lot different unless you put a very bright color on them uh, from the regular soybeans even after they have been treated. This causes a problem as in at the end of the year if seed dealers still had untreated soybeans left they could essentially take it to a co-op or an elevator or something along those lines and sell those soybeans and as long as they weren't treated there's no issue with it whatsoever at all because 
they're just regular soybeans like you grow in your field. So here's the issue with that. If you can't tell visually just by looking at them that those soybeans have been treated with growth promotants uh, like rhizobias, uh, insecticides and fungicides and things like that, then you could go dump those into an elevator and then you have treated soybeans with insecticide on them that can enter the food production for like cattle and stuff like that. And that's a big no, 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 that, that you don't want to happen. So that's why the industry has adopted putting a colorant onto treated soybeans so that you can tell what it is. Basically, it's just a safeguard so treated soybeans can't enter into food production systems. Like I said, ours do have color to them. They're silver. The camera just doesn't pick it up. So why don't we put coloring into our seed treatment to make it like very visually popping? Well, you guys saw this morning and me changing the oil on that tractor. Uh, people would probably be giving me some weird looks uh, for a couple of weeks, especially for a color that was like red or something. So we just don't. This must be one of them tiny houses that you see on the HDTV. Oh, look, there's another one out there in that field and up over there. Must be a tiny house community. But those were great questions. I hope I answered some of them. Like I said, we plant treated soybeans. I'm a huge proponent for treated soybeans. I think treating soybeans is probably one of the best things that you can do to get a better yield in your soybean fields. Uh, my dad's on board with me on that one. You will later on in the year actually see I put out a pretty good soybean plot for Champion where I test a lot of different things for my knowledge, growth, and then also you guys as knowledge grows because I will share that information with you. But before I could finish my lunch there, uh, I ran out of soybeans and then now that I've finished my rant, I guess you could say I can get back to my lunch. But I had a viewer send me a care package with a hat and uh, some beef jerky and then also a sticker for the back of the dually work truck. And if you guys want to have a sticker on the back of the dually dually work truck, send it to this PO box down here below. But thank you, Brady, for sending me the beef jerky and the hat. Okay, just a little piece. The beef jerky, not my finger. There we go. We are done on this side of the field right over here. Now I'm going to show you something on the monitor, which I kind of touched on in the last video. And then right here is where we can keep track of the hybrids in the field. Right here in the blue is the 3-2 soybean. Right there in the red is the 3-4 soybean that we switched to at the last fill up. And like I talked about in the last video, we'll be able to tell how those hybrids perform differently in that field come harvest time by this record keeping. Hey, look who's here, bud. <coughs> yeah. Go on, bud. Don't land on Itzy. Don't think she's here to see me. I think she's here to give away a sticker. Hey, guys. I have decided to come ride around with Ben for the rest of the evening. Um, being laid off at work because of this quarantine starting to get real boring. I can only clean so much. I am picking out the winners for the stickers for my favorite comment um, and I'm going to be picking them out from the last two videos. Let's get to reading those now. Okay guys, so the first um, sticker winner is going to come from the video that was called Land All Fix in Planting Soybeans. So that was our plant vlog day two. Um, that was the first video I edited. Thank you all for your kind comments. It's the first time I've done it by myself from start to finish. Uh, I really enjoyed it and I'll probably be doing it a little bit more. But the winner of the sticker for that video is gonna go to Troy Vetter. Um, Troy said, the day one of your tractors comes with an air ride buddy seat, Molly will enjoy sitting with you a whole lot more. You may even end up with some meat on your sandwich. I thought that was pretty funny and yes, <laughs> I would love a tractor with an air ride buddy seat. So thanks for commenting, Troy. Um, send Ben an email, his email is down in the description and he will send you a sticker. That's something to say? What do you want? What do you want? The second sticker um, is going to come from the video that was posted yesterday. Um, so that is Your Seed, Your Land, Your Profit, Plant Blog Day 3. Um, and the winner for that sticker is going to go to April Lewis. Um, April says, looking at this setup, it looks easy, but you guys put a lot of time and energy into your farming. And thank you to you and your family for doing this. Thank you for that comment, April. We really, really appreciate it. Um, ben and his family work so hard on the farm. Um, it's amazing. You really don't understand it until you're in it. Um, especially coming from my viewpoint, I've never really been around farming that much. I am from this 
area, so I am from rural Iowa, but I've never really been around row croppers. And it's amazing how much effort and time goes into everything that they do. So thank you for that comment. Um, again, send Ben an email. His email is down in the description below. <laughs> and we'll send you a sticker. So when Molly also came to ride, she brought me some ice cream. Kind of a nice little treat. Okay, now I'm starting to wonder who she brought the ice cream for. myself a passenger here today. My grandpa's down here for uh, my dad's birthday today for when we have birthday dinner. He, it's pretty fun to have him ride around with me for a little while. He's actually the one in the profile picture uh, for my YouTube channel. So we're going to go grab him real quick. He's hanging out over there by the grain cart. Then we're going to go for a few rounds. I've been recording videos every day that we've been harvested. And then I put it into a video for the day. So it's kind of like a video diary. Keeps track of what, what we've been doing for the day. It's also how I remember if we got anything done. Well, it's a hell of a lot wider than it used to be. <laughs> Oh yeah, he goes to work with me every day, every day, well except for sometimes he stays with Wayne, like if I know I'm going to be in the mud or it's going to be like wet and messy outside, then I don't take him with me because I don't want to deal with a wet and messy dog, so that doesn't always happen though, I still have to deal with a wet and messy dog sometimes because there's some unforeseen events. The really nice days is when he finds something dead to roll in and then he smells horrible the rest of the day. And then sometimes he jumps out and chases rabbits. He doesn't usually, he won't jump out of the combine though. He only jumps out of the grain cart. Yeah, it's pretty darn good for this year. These were planted really late. And this field didn't get till tilled at all. I actually planted into like a crop of water hemp. It was like planting into a cover crop. There, there were so many weeds out here when I was planting. And there goes a deer. 